All right, today is unique day in the lather games, and uh, uh, the goal with the soap, from what I understand, is to shave with the soap that nobody else in the games will shave with, because if you happen to shave with the same one, then you're out. All right, so I guess the objective is to uh, pick something obscure. Uh, it's kind of a neat little twist. Um, you could pick something so basic that nobody would pick it. But on the other hand, I'm gambling that there are probably guys out there who um, may not know what to do, so they might pick something basic just to get through the games. Uh, so I did try to get obscure, um, and it's kind of cool because I haven't tried this soap yet. I haven't even tried this maker yet. Mama Bear's soaps, and she's got a ton of glycerin soaps. And this is the uh, Lime Cilantro, which I'm hoping is going to be unique. Um, this is not the tub it comes in. Um, this is uh, it's kind of a yellow glycerin soap, kind of standard for glycerin. And sure enough, <clears throat> it smells like lime and cilantro. Um, so we'll see how this guy goes. For the brush, we have soaking a boar brush, Omega Pro 48. Long bristles. Someday this thing may get so, have so much splay that it's too big for me. But for now, it's nice. It's still kind of young. The blade is also going to go uh, along with the unique vibe, one I've never tried before. Rainbow. And it's an Egyptian blade. It's going to be inside. And this is third in my series of uh, UK aristocrats. I, I did the 16 first, then the 21. This is the 66. <clears throat> it's almost identical to the 16, but it's uh, it's less rare, so it's less expensive. Um, it does have the solid uh, body, and uh, or at least the bottom cap. Um, it does have end caps, unlike the 21, and. It does have the, um, you know, the, the joint right here between this shaft section and right here on the 21 was kind of a, uh, a was flush with this part of the handle. Um, with this razor, it is not. With the 66 and the 16, you have the gap there that you see. Um, and then, then the big difference, how you tell this difference from a 16 you can see the diamond-shaped base plate there. A little bevel. Obviously, once you know what to look for, visible from the top and bottom. Just like a Gillette Tech and those sorts of razors. And so that makes this a 66. And here is the blade, the way the rainbow appears. And this is what told me it was Egyptian. It was right there, made in Egypt. Super class blade is what it says right above that. And there's the logo. It's identical on the other side. It's uh, it's colored. Um, you can see kind of a film of some sort of color there. Maybe some kind of anti-rust coating or something. So I'll tighten that guy down. So hopefully my soap and my blade will be unique. Alright. Never tried anything by Mama Bear. She's got a nice uh, collection, and so I thought, I thought I'd order one, not too expensive, and so I chose Lime Cilantro. I'm a big fan of cilantro. I've got my Dollar Tree Shave Lather Bowl, and it does not have a sample because it would take a while to scrape out a sample. You can see the, I was seeing how it would work. You can see that gash right there. I was trying to scrape it out with my usual guy, and I it was much too hard. I, I could have done it, but it would have taken a while. So we'll lather this one right from the bowl, something I don't often do. At the end, we're going to follow the lime pattern of the soap. Adagio is from Barrister and Man, and it is a splash that uh, is supposed to have kind of a lime cherry uh, type scent profile to it. Now, what I usually get from that soap uh, is more of a grassy um, maybe a little bit of lime, but kind of a grassy and fibrous 
uh, type type scent. So we'll see what that gives us. All right, uh, we're ready to go. Splash my face. I haven't used too many other glycerin soaps. <clears throat> I've used Colonel Conks. Have great success with that. It's a wonderful and inexpensive soap. Really delivers great performance. I shook, as usual, all of the water out that I could from this brush. We'll see how this loads with merely a damp brush and not a wet one. I should have been looking at the time there. I probably started at maybe 5.35. Let's... Uh, that's been 20-ish seconds, and that's 30-ish seconds. So, with not so much coming on there, let's, uh, usually people are not going to probably do it the way I do it, but I'm just kind of a experimenty kind of person. I'm going to put about an eighth of a uh, teaspoon of water on top of the soap there. Hopefully not as much of it goes in to the sides of the container and escapes. Yeah, see now it's really starting to build up. Well, let's see, maybe I started at about 34 just then. So that's 10 seconds. Twenty seconds. And thirty seconds. So I'm gonna get out some of this extra. So there we go. It looks like it loaded pretty well. So let's roll with it. Yeah, it's nice. You can smell that cilantro as well. It truly is a good ascent accurate to its name. Alright. Now Bowl is empty, so we're just relying on the water that we provided so far. Just going to stir it for a few seconds before I start adding water. No idea what to expect. So that's why my lather building is using some more cautious steps. I have a pattern that I've kind of picked up and I find that it works on just about every soap but because it's kind of the Swiss Army knife of patterns it is not as a time efficient and so when you get to a soap that you know it's much better than you to pick a more a pattern that fits that soap specifically instead of the skeleton key See, so even with just uh, about one teaspoon of soap, we've got some great, uh, with, of water, we've got some good lather here. Lime scent, definitely there. A little bit of the cilantro. It's not strong, so I wouldn't be surprised if I didn't really smell it too much when I go to my face. Some nice uh, light sheen, not not too much of a sheen. Okay, we're going to add the rest. So now we've got two teaspoons of water in the soap. If you didn't know, there are some guys out there who who like to take a, a little bit of a glycerin soap and kind of mix it in with. Uh, their traditional soap and it really kind of changes the lather up um, to something maybe a little bit more slick and crazy and delicious something they like haven't really done that yet 
So um, sometimes uh, if you buy a lather, a glycerin soap, and you end up not liking it for a main soap, um, then try it before you pitch it. Try that. Do they call it an uber lather or super lather? I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what. Also, um, uh, what else was there? With glycerin soaps. Uh, don't store them wet. Try to dry them out where they kind of uh, get kind of eaten away and wear out quicker since they uh, attract water. So two and a half teaspoons of lather and we are looking it's looking like a great great lather for us I like these long bristles my fingertips are the only things that are getting soap on them so that's very nice Oh, I think I read that a glycerin soap is a really good pre-shave uh, option for you because it uh, does something to your skin to really help you to get, to prepare it, um, help you to get a, a nice close shave because of something. Um, so if you have a glycerin soap that you don't care about, try using it as a pre-shave. Um, see if that helps your shaves before you get rid of it okay lather continues to increase size comparison I've got a big head anyway as you can see it still moves a little bit but it's still pretty rigid I'm going to add a little bit more water I've said this on a few of my other videos with this brush, but I, uh, I got it in a, a purchase of several items, a whole box of stuff for a great price. It's just miscellaneous stuff that the guy just didn't use anymore. It turned out great because I learned so, I was relatively new at the time and I just learned so many things. I, I got to try out different soap brands that I just would never have otherwise. And this brush was in that, and I pr I may never have you know tried out this particular bore, but this handle shape is just terrific. I've got big hands, and this shape, if you have this type of grip, a kind of a 90 degree angle uh, grip, this it's perfect. This one, this handle allows you to do that without getting your fingers too messy. It was just. A welcome welcome sight all right so let's look and see what kind of peaks we might have here long and elastic look at that all right mama bear like I said I don't do much with glycerin soaps other than Colonel Conks I know it performs well uh, but I don't know um, about all the glycerin soaps out there. Um, I think there's a thing called melt and pour where you just basically mix your oils and then you pour the soap mix into your container and then you're done. You know, it's pretty easy. Um, and uh, I don't know if that's what this is or not. I don't know if because glycerins are just, they're just glycerins. 
um, glycerin type soaps and they don't have too much extra in them maybe they all perform the same not sure but Colonel Conk's a great performer let's see about mama bear mmm got a good feel to it Thin looking at first. Be interesting to see if I have, you know, thinned it out too much. Looks good in the bowl, but that doesn't mean doesn't mean too much. Let's go to since we have lots of soap, that's what it's there for. Why don't we go to the bowl and get some more? It's typical in the scrubbing process a lot of times to, to have it look this way kind of not there in some in a splotchy then once you start with the painting motions it should spread out and thicken like that maybe the extra um water on my face kind of pushed it over the, the point where it should be and so in that case I may want to adjust that maybe dry my face before I pass but that looks pretty good let's try it out all right I have no idea what this rainbow blade is going to feel like this is a good um, shaver for me it is uh, efficient yet usually pretty comfortable. can't remember what other brands of blades come from Egypt. Well, Onyx, the, uh, the soap's doing its job. Very interesting how it's almost uh, like it's a rough blade, but in a way it's not. And I don't know whether it's the nature of the blade or the soap is just doing its doing its job. wave down mm, not a lot of slickness and creaminess left on the face after that oh let's uh, like I said let's uh, remove some excess water on my face just so I don't thin this down anymore Um, yeah, not really smelling too much. Not really smelling too much lime. Um, an herby uh, note is coming through. It could be some of the notes of the cilantro. Let's see how much water I used because uh, it's probably a little too thin. Um, three and a half teaspoons of water for that minute load and that was 30 seconds of kind of just a damp brush. Then I added some water, did 30 seconds. And from the soap that I have I believe that is enough of a lathering time. I think I've got enough soap to do the job so that seemed to be correct. Let's hope nobody else in the games picks Mama Bear. Mama Bear Lime and Cilantro. Be tragic if somebody 
and kind of funny. Somebody picked the same exact obscure soap. My cheeks get shaved really well, kind of no matter what I do. So you can, you can tell I did a cross grain on the first cheek. I kind of just went all wild west on the second cheek. This rainbow blade seems to be working well. Um, of course, we're going to have to wait and see what the uh, uh, result is, you know, with the resulting shave, whether it's close or not. Okay, rinse. This is a quick rinsing soap, probably because I just have it mixed just a hair too thin. Colonel Conks gives a really nice uh, creamy lather, and so I probably just, this is probably similar, probably just thinned it down a little bit too much more than I should have, but it looks, it looked good in the bowl. Can't always trust that, right? It's a good looking lot of soap there. Okay, third pass. Yeah, very faint. Um, I'd say a 2 out of 10 in terms of scent strength. Of course, it would increase just a little bit if I mixed it a little thicker. Third pass. This is my tricky area right here. See, did you hear the razor kind of skipping across? I'm not getting very much glide from this. Um, you know what? Let's uh, let's go back to the puck and just see if. Uh, If we can kind of get something a little more creamy. That's what experiments are for. And that's what the puck's for if you ever want to go back to it. So we'll just pick up some and kind of do a face lather. There we go. See if it gets more. Kind of creamy and stuff. Oh yeah, it's thickening up. in the sound that the brush is making. Yep, I can tell it's a lot thicker. So yeah, I just thinned that down too much. All right. I kind of did some of my neck and the, my right cheek. So let's start over here. Yeah, a lot more glide. Very nice. Yeah, see that? You didn't hear any stuttering or skipping. 
because it's got the right amount of lubrication this time. How about that? Okay, so for that one minute load, three, three and a half ounces is not the right one. Not the right measurement. Excellent. Excellent. All right, I'm going to rinse this off, kind of take a look at the hair uh, that was cut. So that's a pretty good cut, probably a little above average um, with this rainbow blade inside of the 66. Um, the uh, just see some tips um, of some of the hairs in my trouble area. Uh, this did get hit in essence with three pa three passes and then a touch up pass um, since I redid that third pass. So uh, yeah, um, eighty five percent baby butt smooth on my cheek areas without really trying to go uh, without going against the grain very much at all. So that's pretty good. And uh, you know what? We've got so much of this lather uh, left. Just gonna kind of do it as a kind of as a face wash here. Just to kind of. So this does have a, a little bit of the lime scent in a kind of an herby way. And I guess that's where the lime is being mixed. You know, with the cilantro. Some people um, do kind of use this as their post shave. They'll take whatever soap they use, whatever lather they use, and just uh, put it on their face again. I don't usually do that. This time, I just wanted a second feel of the uh, of the creaminess. Once I went back to the pug and got a little bit more soap and changed my ratios. Um, but yeah, there's that creamy slickness during the shave. I did not report, um, creaminess when I, um, you know, when I was rinsing. But after I went back to the puck, changed up the ratio a little bit, it was that, back to that nice, um, creamy texture that I'm used to from the, uh, glycerin type soaps. Very nice. All right, I'm gonna rinse this the rest of the way off. Um, and then we'll look at post shave stiff. So here's that uh, Omega brush, probably a plastic handle here. And uh, some interesting things about the, um, this type of handle. A couple of things where, uh, regarding grip, because of the narrowness here, it helps you to have that 90 degree angle grip you saw me use um, when I was just kind of stirring the lather like that. Um, but then a lot of people like the grip when you apply the lather to, to put the butt in your hand like that and then reach up and grab this front part. And this bevel right here makes it perfect for you to do that. And that gives you uh, flexibility like that. Now I tend to just kind of do it like this. One, my index finger going along it to provide direction and control. And then these two just to kind of hold a thumb and the middle finger just to hold on. And I think that's usually where I end up. But a lot of people like this grip too. So this is a great handle for either, either and any of those grips. And you can see kind of display. This is kind of a young boar. Um, some of the tips are uh, splitting. Um, man, this thing's going to get big. All right. So the rainbow blade worked well. Um, uh, well, kind of a little bit above average uh, for that shave. Who knows if the first two passes might have been more creamy, uh, might have had better results. Um, a little bit more glide, you know, that may have been, that may have made all the difference and knocked it up a notch. Um, I don't know how 
much these are. This was gotten from triablade.com as a part of a, I would just went through and just saw a bunch that I didn't know what the heck they were. And so I just, uh, they're, you know, like 30 cents each or 20 cents each or something like that. So I just bought up a, 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 a singles of a bunch of them. Uh, this obviously is not in their top 10 blade sampler pack that they have. Um, but it's a, it's a good respectable blade. Uh, if I was stuck on a desert island with this brush, with that soap, with that blade, and with this razor, it'd be fine. Great shave. Uh, comfortable. Um, this is a just a wonderful brush. Um, since it's so big, it is a little bit unwieldy. You do have to kind of, you know, treat it a little different, but it's, it's soft. It holds a lot of lather. Those are really the things you want from a brush. Um, and the blade, like I said, performed great. Um, and I got a nice creamy lather uh, when I got the water adjustment right on this guy. Um, so, and a pleasant, pleasant scent, not strong. But, uh, so it, since it's not strong, I might consider passing it on if somebody wants it. But, uh, um, but it, you know, glycerin soap, good performance. Um, all right. Uh, so I'm going to clean up. And then uh, I'm going to, okay, let's do this. Dry myself off just a little bit so that I can put my balm on. And then after I clean up, I will give my the balm a little chance to absorb while I clean. And that way, when I put the uh, splash on, that's mainly kind of alcohol stuff and scent. Um, so that it's not as uh, irritating to my to my face. Sometimes if I go right after a shave and just go right with a high alcohol type uh, thing like Sterling or something like that, it uh, I do get some redness popping up because I guess that's just a little too strong for me for my particular skin. Uh, and of course, let me mention the Rainbow in the '66 did well for me. The blades are highly subjective. It may do nothing for you at all. It may be the worst blade you've ever tried. So it's so many variables because of skin and hair type and all that. Just want to throw that disclaimer out there. So there we go. The rainbow blade. Someday you'll find it. All right. I'm going to clean up and I'll be back. If you're new to glycerin soaps, one of the things I believe I've learned is that you, um, these often you can put in the microwave and melt them into the container of your choice. Uh, and so now I did not do this because I chose this specific container because it was a, pretty much the exact size of the puck. Uh, you can also shred these guys like you can with other soaps, uh, with other hard soaps that you shouldn't melt. But glycerin is one of the ones that I uh, uh, you can usually melt. Uh, check online first um, or call the manufacturer and uh, and see what they think. But uh, glycerin usually, um, just be, be, be very careful in the microwave if you do that. Obviously, this is a plastic container, so you would have to hook it out of that and put it in a microwave-safe dish. Um, but then if you have a, a special bowl that you like to use to hold your soaps um, or some other type of tub and you don't want any kind of gap around it maybe it's a larger tub that you want more lather a building room you know because this is kind of a little small um, then uh, you can just melt and pour that should be just fine you can also shred it and then press those shreds in the shredding method is something you can do for other hard soaps uh, like williams um, uh, williams mug soap um, anything that is uh, um, hard uh, triple milled soaps usually you have to do that um, Arco, uh, the uh, uh, Pre de Provence 63 is one of my favorites, and it's really hard, so you would have to grate that one as well. Uh, a lot of the, um, and the Cropes, like Barrister and Mann, and all that whole artisan movement, um, you don't need to grate those because you can just, you can spoon them out. They're soft enough where you can just spoon them out of the container and press them down into the new, uh, the new form. So... A little bit about soaps there. All right, time to try out this splash. 
when I first started getting into the wet shaving community online, this was kind of, it must have just been released because it was making its rounds. People were selling it and buying it and all that stuff. And so I guess they uh, wanted to pass it on to somebody else. Yeah, I can kind of taste, I can kind of smell that uh, kind of resinous grass type uh, scent right away. A little tiny bit of stinging, but uh, very little redness, just a little bit right here. I'm confident that the, uh, you know, the balm has already kind of removed the issues from that. A um, little bit of sunburn I have from the other day. And there we go. All right, I might be back with some footnotes um, and also let the alcohol kind of evaporate so I can get a better idea of this scent. So if you want to shell out some bucks and uh, get a, uh, a, an attractive uh, razor, this one's um, more reasonably priced uh, for being what it is. It's, it's heavy. It's, uh, the grip is perfect. You're not going to drop it, even if your hands are soapy. The performance is great. Um, if you want to spend twice as much or three times as much, then you can go for the 16 or the 21 or the 15. 15 is an open comb version of the 21. Um, the uh, uh, the only difference you'll know is the uh, di that diamond base plate. It's just a higher quality base plate on the 16. Um, but you know, it's gorgeous. It's like shaving with, with art. It's like shaving with jewelry. I think this is a great little piece for uh, people to pick up and enjoy and see if that's what, they, what they're proud to, to shave with. And it's going to last a lifetime because these um, have already lasted a lifetime. Uh, very good quality pieces. And uh, still feeling, it's almost like that uh, this little spray had some menthol in it or something like that. Don't know, probably didn't. I am getting the lime, so that's cool. A little bit of that. I am getting the cherry, but only because I've been told there's some cherry in there. Pretty sure I would not be able to pull that out of the profile if it was a blind scent test. And the grassy notes are, are really there uh, for me. And so I don't get the cherry limeade uh, thing that a lot of people are commenting about this particular soap. And I've tried the soap and the splash now. And uh, they are pretty true to each other. So at least there's that. So uh, there we go. All right. So hopefully, unique day for the lather games. Hopefully I will still be in the running after everybody does their shaves. Um, hopefully nobody else has, has picked Mama Bear Lime Cilantro. All right. Um, have a, a good night. Yeah, there's got to be some menthol. Got to be some menthol in it. I'm feeling it. Just a little, it's not uncomfortable. Um, it's, uh, to me, I don't like menthol. Uh, and so if a splash or balm has it, I usually have to sell it. Um, but, uh, and so this is probably the level where I would sell it. Of course, it could just be the alcohol reacting on my skin. But I got a feeling it's been long enough. I think that should have been gone by now. So I'm guessing it's the, unless there's some kind of allergy reaction to an ingredient in there. But uh, there we go. Quick online search would answer whether or not there was menthol in this. Pretty sure they're not able to list, list the ingredients, yeah, on the uh, package here. Oh, yep, menthol. Okay, lime, cherry, violet leaf, lily of the valley, menthol, and musk, I think is the last one. It's hard to read. So that may be the, the violet leaf and lily of the valley and the musk may be combining to get that kind of grassy scent. Um, yeah, how about that? How about that? It does have menthol. Good to know I'm not having some kind of reaction to it. All right. Good shave. Um, 
I'll skip this aftershave since it's got the menthol in it, but uh, everything else, uh, very nice. Um, the un the nigh unscented, um, you know, lather, that could be improved on, but still a great performer uh, and, and kind of felt just like the glycerin soap from Colonel Cox as well. So in that sense, you could look at the price. I'm pretty sure Colonel Cox is cheaper. Um, so pick your... You know, pick your scent, what scent you look like, or if you want a budget, if you're on a budget, then I think Colonel Conks might be a cheaper glycerin soap. If you're really on a budget, I'll tell you what to do if you like glycerin soap. Uh, same wonderful lather I was able to create here by the third pass, you know, by going back to the puck, having the right water ratio. You can get at the Dollar Tree, dollar stores, or Walmart, go buy the Pears Glycerin Soap. And it's just a hand soap. Um, but it's just a glycerin soap and it, uh, you can lather it up just like this and you can melt it down and pour it into this type of container and have that whole puck for a dollar. Whereas these, uh, might be more like eight or 11. I'm not sure. Now the scent is not going to be there for you. That's where you're going to get your money. Um, uh, but if price is an issue, then Go for the pears. It's got almost like a licorice scent to it. Uh, <clears throat> the black licorice scent, not the good one. Almost a medicinal type scent. But, uh, you know, if you're strapped for cash, then that's that's got to be the way I'd recommend. Because it gave me a nice, creamy, luxurious lather. Very good. All right. I hope this helped you in some way um, regarding anything that I've said. That's why I do it. Um, I don't... Uh, get reimbursed by any kind of, uh, of these products or anything. Um, not yet, at least. I doubt that'll ever come, but, uh, um, but that's not there. So all these are my opinions and just my opinions. I've been shaving like this for a few years now and, um, uh, and hope it, hope it's helpful to you. All right. Take care. Have a good night.